Morning, everybody. I know I'm a minute early, so we're going to give somebody, give some people some time this morning. I need to log in. I know things are back, starting to slowly get back to normal. So, good morning. I can't see who I'm adjusting. I can't see who's on. Okay, there we go. I got some people. So, morning. Morning, everybody. Hope you all are doing well this morning. Welcome to my home. Home. It's a great day to be alive this morning. And we're glad you are here. Good morning, Pastor Andy. I see uh, Cheryl and Pastor Brian and Susan. Good morning, everybody. My phone's a little far away from me, so I'm having a hard time... Uh, seeing everybody, but man, we're so glad you're here this morning. Um, it's a great day. Great day. I'm a little tired. Uh, Landon was up a little bit last night, so this morning I'm a little sluggish, but by God's grace, we're going to have a great time this morning in the Word. Um, so as we get started, let's pray. Um, don't forget, our pastor is having his heart cath tomorrow morning. So, as we pray this morning, we're going to pray and lift up our pastor, um, and, uh, and we'll get going. So, God in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for keeping us in the night hour. We thank you for getting us up this morning. Lord, we thank you for being with us. Lord, the word says that you, have, you are always with us, that you would never leave us, you would never forsake us. And God, we thank you for the assurance that your word is true. And Lord, I pray for our pastor today. I pray that um, as he is resting today, Lord, we pray that there would be no anxiety, no, uh, no uh, stress or anything going on in his body as he is uh, preparing for the heart cath tomorrow morning. Lord, we pray for our pastor. We lift up the man of God who is the head of our church, Lord, that is leading this body. And Lord, we just plead the blood of Jesus over him. Lord, we thank you for going before him uh, two or three years ago with the heart attack. And Lord, we believe you're going to go before him. Lord, be with the, the doctors and the physicians and the nurses and the scrub nurses all the way down to central services who are prepping the equipment that will uh, go into this heart cath. God, we pray that you would uh, help them to do their job thoroughly. And Lord, we pray that um, everything would go smoothly and we're believing for a good report for our pastor that everything is fine, that there are no issues. In fact, that uh, it's better than they have seen it in the past, that he is, he's not uh, just maintaining, but God, he is getting better, and you are healing his body. And Lord, we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. So we are glad you are here today. Um, we're going, we may do some worship. Uh, as I got up this morning, Bethany uh, and I, like I said, didn't sleep a whole lot. Uh, had some things with Landon. He cried a little bit last night. Nothing is wrong, just a little fussy. So um, she asked if she could take the morning off, and I said, okay, that's fine. Uh, and that, Because the Lord was just kind of dealing with me uh, a different way. So we're going to maybe do some music. Uh, but I, I just um, I want to testify this morning, if I could, about how good God has been through this to the McCutcheon family, through this COVID-19, coronavirus, whatever you want to call it, pandemic. Um, a few weeks ago, our pastor preached on recovering all. It's a message I've heard him preach and, and, and speak about uh, over the past several years. Um, but he made a statement that there's going to be people coming out of this better than they went into it. And uh, what I'm about to share with you, I'm sharing with you because... Uh, the Bible says that we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. So part of worship is testifying of what God has brought you through or what God has done in your life. And so uh, this morning, I just felt a little impressed to share with you kind of uh, where Bethy and I have been the past eight weeks. Um, <laughs> we're not leaving. We're not moving. We're not doing anything like that. Uh, but uh, God has moved on our behalf. Um, at the first of the year, Bethany and I... Uh, we, we joined with our church family and we fasted because pastor asked us to fast and we, we fasted not only for what pastor was asking us to, uh, corporately, uh, but he, but I had a few specific things that I was praying for. Um, and I'm, I, I'm going to be honest. I'll, I'll tell you what they are. Uh, I needed a car 
for, for myself. Now, I didn't need a brand new one. I just needed one that was a little better than I had. Uh, mine was getting up in years and was over 200,000 miles, and uh, I didn't drive it much out of St. Albans. Um, so, so that was one. And honestly, Bethany and I bought a home knowing that in a few years, a roof would be needed. Um, and I don't know if you know this, but cars and roofs are not cheap. Um, so I was believing God for miracles. I was believing God to do something and to move and, and do things, but um, I didn't. I wasn't seeing it happen in a timetable I wanted, uh, and that's okay because God doesn't always move when I want Him to. He moves when He feels that it's time. He He knows the perfect time for moving, and uh, so we we started this uh, lockdown. And right as it started, if you'll remember, there was a, a hailstorm that went through St. Albans. Uh, and I immediately began to pray the same anointing that Pastor had a, a year ago and said, Lord, keep leave my house, but if you want my roof, take it. And, uh, and over the next few days, we had someone come and look. And by God's grace, in the next two or three weeks, uh, I get a roof put on my house. Uh, and, and you may say, Joey, that's crazy. No, that's what I prayed for because I knew I couldn't afford a, a, a roof and I knew I couldn't afford a car at the same time. So God was taking care of things. Uh, he put a, uh, he, he, he um, there was a car come for sale in the price range that I could afford. Uh, I didn't want to go in debt. I wanted to be able to pay cash uh, and not have a car payment. And at the time uh, of, we found out that the roof was going to be taken care of uh, because of a storm, a car came available. And I was able to, to purchase a car. Um, so the two things that I prayed for, uh, that I was believing God for in the, in the last few we weeks have, have happened. And then uh, we bought, like I said, we bought our home a little over a year and a half ago. And uh, the, it needed some updates. And so we've painted over the course, we painted every room except one bathroom over the course of the past year and a half and tried to make it what we want it to. But everything's a process because uh, equipment and different things aren't cheap. So we're just taking room at a time. And one room that's always been an issue for Bethany is our, our kitchen. And over time, we have put uh, a dishwasher in. We've changed out an avocado green sink. And uh, we were blessed with a, a stainless steel sink that we were able to put in. So we've made some updates, but the flooring needed done and uh, our oven needed to be replaced. And, and because of things and, and uh, some blessings that we received through uh, uh, not people, through, through the kingdom operating uh, and, and uh, stimulus packages, whatever you want to call it, God was setting Bethany and I up to be able to not only do what uh, w was needed with a roof and a car, but some of the wants that we wanted. And uh, we were able to put in flooring. And I would like to say that that came at, a, at an easy deal, but no, uh, some things didn't come as easy as I wanted them to. Uh, last week, we had a guy come in, and, and honestly, uh, we didn't do our part in vetting very well, and we had a disaster on our hands with our flooring. But I can still say God is good because we addressed that situation and we brought someone else in. And today I'm looking just beyond my phone to my kitchen and it's got new flooring and there's uh, a new oven that my wife cooked dinner in last night. And you may say, why are you telling me this, Pastor Joey? I'll tell you why. Is because no matter what, God's been good and he's worthy of all praise. And, uh, and I, I thought about this, I was thinking about this last night when, when I knew worship was really what was on the docket. And it, like I said, we'll get into a few songs, but um, I was thinking about it last night and my worship isn't based on my circumstances. I don't worship because things are happening good in my life. I worship because God is good and God is faithful. And if I only worship in the it because of good circumstances, then my praise is squashed because of bad circumstances or because of situations that aren't in my favor. And that often happens. It's easy to get caught up and to say, well, I can, I can worship 
on a mountain. Yeah, man, anybody can worship on a mountain. But can you worship in a valley? Can you worship when, when someone comes in and says they can do a job for you and they cost you money? And now you're out money and you've got to go find someone who can fix the issue and you want to pay them because they're running to your aid. Even if it's a friend that says, I'll, tell, I'll help you. And God is still God and God is still good. And so we're going to just kind of have a moment where we're just thanking God for who He is. Because He's worthy of all praise. He's worthy of all honor. And I would be amiss this morning not to just say, God, you've been good to me. You've been so good to me. And Lord, I thank you. So where you're at, where you're sitting at home, can you just lift your hands and say, God, I give you praise. Lord, you've been so faithful. Even in the hard times, God, you've been good. You're worthy. Holy you are. Come on, just sing your song to him. You're worthy of honor and praise. You're holy, Lord. Holy Lord. Worthy of honor and praise. You're holy. Oh, oh, oh. 
so I receive. this morning to receive what God wants to give you. Don't be afraid to stand with your arms out open and say, oh God, I receive. I receive. Some of you are afraid. You've been asking for it, but you're afraid to stand with expectation, to stand and say, Lord, I receive it. you think, well, what if the answer is no? You know what? Sometimes the answer is no. But God is still worthy of praise. He's still worthy of it all. So this morning, just say, God, I'll receive. It may not even be what you've been asking for, but it's what you need. It's what He knows you need. Say, God, I receive it. in every home, every living room, every car, wherever we're at this morning. Lord, we thank you for meeting us here. And Lord, I speak peace and blessing over those who are out and about today, heading back to work. Lord, may your spirit go before them, lead God and direct us. And Lord, once again, we ask for prayer for our pastor as he goes in this tomorrow morning. Lord, we thank you for sparing him and saving his life two and a half years ago. Lord, we ask you to continue to heal his body. And Lord, we give you praise and we give you honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for being here this morning. I pray you have had a good time. I have. And you are loved, you are appreciated, and I can't wait to see you two Sundays 
on May the 31st, 10 o'clock at 2019 Kanawha Terrace. I hope you're excited because I know that we are. Have a great day. God bless you all.